Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. On a previous video discussion on EMC consideration, I actually discussed how can we actually partition the PCB according to the functional subsystem. The reason why we want to partition the PCB according to functional subsystem is because we want to reduce the trace length as much as possible. When we actually able to reduce the trace length, for example, we can actually reduce the differential mode radiation. So this is the objective, why we want to partition the PCB according to the functional subsystem. This video, I'm going to discuss what is quiet area, why we need to have a quiet area on a PCB, how can we actually achieve a quiet area. Next, I'm also going to discuss why we need to have an area to contain all the emitter, which means that all the noise source. How can we actually minimize the emitter okay, by either radiate or conducting? Okay, so this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part 40 series discussion on EMC consideration. The rest of the video discussion on EMC consideration, I have put the playlist under the description. So please take a look on those videos if you're keen to know more about EMC consideration. This is my email. If you have any questions regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, please also feel free to give me comments so that I can improve the quality of this channel and also maybe suggest topics so that I can discuss them time from time to time. Okay, so let's understand why we need to do partition on a PCB. Earlier on, on the part 39 series discussion, I have mentioned that the reason why we want to do partition is because we want to reduce the trace length as much as possible. This partition is even more important when we actually comes to mixed signal. Mixed signal basically means that on a PCB, typically nowadays, we have analog signal. We also have digital signal. The power basically to power all the component and we also have the ground plane. And it becomes very essential that we have a form of partition so as to separate all these different kinds of signal so as to reduce the EMI issue as much as possible. In a typical application, there are noisy, okay, which is the emitter, and we also have the quiet portion on a PCB. A good first step is to know where is the noisy and quiet area on the board. Okay, so this means that, for example, okay, when we actually design a PCB, we must dedicate a place to put all the noise source or all the emitter. We also need to dedicate a special place where we contain all those sensitive device on a quiet area. Okay, so because of this, once all this is all known, the, the PCB design can actually dedicate portion of the board for this circuit and also to implement some noise reduction techniques so as to minimize, for example, radiation, conducting, coupling, etc. Okay, the quiet zone is the area that physically separate analog and digital signal or various function module. In this way, we can prevent other emitters from interference with the component in the quiet zone. Okay, so this is what I have mentioned. Basically, the quiet area is basically we want to separate all kinds of different signal, analog, digital, power, or ground. The reason why we want to do this is basically we want to keep the emitter as far away as possible to those that are very vulnerable to interference. For example, GPS, they actually need a quiet area so it could receive the small signal from the satellite. Can you imagine? The satellite is many, many kilometers away from the Earth and the signal that actually transmit from the satellite, they are actually very weak when they actually reach the Earth. So therefore, we need to have a quiet area 
so as to prevent any interference to upset the receive signal from the satellite. Quiet area prevent noise source located elsewhere on the PCB from corrupting those very sensitive devices. This is what I have emphasized again and again. The quiet area is basically to ensure that whoever the noise source, they must be allocated outside the quiet area so that they will not be able to come into to disturb those very vulnerable circuits. Okay, example is power pin noise from digital circuit entering the power pins of analog device, audio components, I.O. filters, and interconnection. So basically, for example, power, they actually has a form of noise. Okay, once the noise enter the digital circuit, we have big issue. And if also enter, for example, the analog device, it going to have some form of interference. And for example, in the audio, and also the I.O. filter and all kinds of interconnection. Okay, to implement a quiet ground, a partition or more. Okay, I'm not sure whether they are pronounced this correctly. More is required. Okay, so let's take a look what is actually a more. Okay, over here you can see that basically I designate this as a quiet zone. And in this quiet zone, I actually has a more to so-called craft up this space as a quiet zone. Basically over here, Technically, you should not have any unrelevant copper line that run into this space. Basically, these are, for example, these are all the I.O., which is very vulnerable to any so-called noise source. And because of this, I actually want to put them into a quiet zone. And you can see that any other traces, they will not be able to enter into this quiet area because it may incur coupling, for example. So the key purpose of this mode is to ensure that unrelated trace will not run into this space here. Okay, so this is what it means. The mode serve as a keep up zone for signal and trace that are unrelated to the mode area. Okay, which means that for example, these are all the I.O. Anything that is unrelated will not be able to enter into this quiet area. Okay, so this is a very simple definition of quiet area. Next, okay, molding is used to separate and isolate critical circuit from others. It serves as a keep up zone for signal and trace that are unrelated to the mold area or this interface. Okay, so this is about the same meaning. Okay, let's take a look on this diagram. Okay, so basically this is what we call a bridge. Okay, we have this mold. Basically, we want to create or craft up this quiet zone here. Okay, so this is a quiet zone that we actually craft up. So if, let's say, there is some traces that want to relate to those that are actually in the quiet area. We actually want to enter through the bridge. Okay, so this is what I mean, a bridge here. Basically, all those so-called traces that want to enter into the quiet area, I want to enter them through the gap of the bridge and into the quiet zone. Okay, so this is how we can also provide some form of isolation between the two areas. Okay, so this is where all the noise source, this is where we have the quiet area. If there is a reason those from the noise source want to enter into the quiet area, okay, I want to enter them via the bridge so as to do some form of partition over here. Okay, so let's do some study okay, to understand, for example, okay, the mole violation and what is the correct use of mole. Okay, so this is what I have described um, over this diagram. Okay, so let's study the correct use of more. Okay, so basically you need to, to have an so-called image current to return back. So basically from here you can see that basically they enter into the quiet area through the bridge over here. So this is the correct use of more. Okay, let's study so-called the more violation. Okay, for example, over here, this track enter into the quiet area for example underneath it so what happened here is basically when you actually has this underneath the pcb for example okay there will be a ground returning so instead of returning through the let's say the image parameters okay they may actually return back through the casing of the mold because when we actually do a mold 
these are all conductive material and basically the ground can return from here and basically from here and then finally back to the IC and this become a big issue because we create a ground loop for example over here and this potentially can have differential mode radiation which incurred an EMC issue. Next, okay, let's quickly understand on quiet area. Okay, so this diagram here actually can see that we have two different ground. One is basically for the quiet IO ground. These are all the noisy ground. As I told you earlier on, those that in the noisy area, if they really need okay, to enter into the quiet ground, they need to go through the bridge. So over here, this diagram, I actually also separate them into based on the speed or frequency. Can imagine that this is high speed, typically like CPU. Okay, we have the medium, okay, which is inside this zone here. And we have those slow speed component over here. So over here, you can actually see that I actually partition them according to the speed of the component. High speed here, okay, those medium speed inside this square and those that slow speed will be outside here. And like I mentioned early on, if those noisy, if they really require to enter into the quiet area, they need to go through the bridge. Let's take a look on this diagram here. Okay, you can see that I actually have some filter interface. Okay, so this is basically all the critical circuit or those that device that is very sensitive to interference. I actually can do some shield to prevent interference from outside to reach them. And over here, you can see that whoever that want to reach into this so-called uh, quiet zone, they uh, have a form of filtering. And basically, this is also something that you can incorporate so as to separate the quiet area from the noisy area. Okay, next on the partition, I also mentioned about this emitter here. So EMI is basically the process of some emitter or noise source influencing the victim signal. Okay, in EMC, basically, you need to have a noise source. You also need to have a victim and you also need to have a medium. How does the so-called noise source actually reach the medium? Basically, that is what we call the medium. Okay, so they can actually reach from the noise source to the victim either by contact conductivity, basically like for example, wire. Okay, they radiate through the air, capacity or inductive coupling, which I have discussed on the previous EMC discussion. Essentially, the energy of some source affect the behavior of a signal unintentionally according to the original design intent. Okay, because this noise source, they actually will affect some designs unintentionally without knowing, okay, which means that we actually do not design this. And because some form of energy actually radiate out, they actually upset the whole design. The primary emitter are those that carry high speed clock. Okay, for example, those very high frequency speed clock and data lines along with parastatic coupling to slower speed line. Okay, we don't want to run our line that contain high speed and then low speed, for example. Okay, because high speed, okay, they can have some issue and coupling may actually occur. And we want to reduce this as much as possible. Okay, besides on slower speed line, for example, the power line, and also the ground line, okay, they can be potentially become a bit dim. The primary reset are low level analog input lines for RFI and digital line for transient. Radiate RF coupling will occur between different functional section. Okay, for example, emission from an oscillator may couple to other nearby components. Okay, for example, when we actually design an oscillator, they basically capable to radiate out because of higher frequency. And once they actually radiate out, they are actually coupled to neighboring device and may become a potential EMC issue. Those very sensitive or susceptible area, such as front end of a receiver, may be affected by nearby emission. Okay, earlier on, I have discussed on GPS, for example. Okay, because the receive signal is so weak, and basically on the RF front end, any form of interference may quickly disturb this design. And therefore, we need to be very careful on those emitters on a PCB. 
An effective way to prevent such internal coupling is to enclose the emitter or those that is very sensitive in a metallic shield enclosure. If calculate EMI prediction show that a conductive housing is necessary, this has to be designed in. Okay, let's take a look on this diagram in order to understand better. Okay, this line I have mentioned on the previous slides. Okay, for example, these are all the potential. Okay, for example, as let's say this is a GPS. Okay, the RF front end may be very vulnerable to any interference. So therefore, we can build a shield to enclose them. Okay, for example, this LO, they can be potential emitter. Again, we can shield them. So this shielding, you can see that basically we can shield the noise source or we can shield those that potentially can become a victim or issue on EMC. Basically, this is on the discussion on, for example, the quiet area and also on the emitter area. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please sub to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. See you guys.